Hello, welcome to No Better Time. I'm Phil Salter, and I'm here today with Joseph Kane. Thanks for joining me. You bet. Hello. Joseph is an all-around great guy and great ping pong player. Uh, you might even say a championship player. <laughs> at least at Go React. Yeah, yeah. We worked together at a company called Go React, and uh, we had a tournament, and he won. Didn't you win like twice, or did someone else win the second time? You won twice, right? I won twice. Yes. Yes, he's very good. Very good. Um, so Joseph's awesome because I've been kind of posting about this podcast on LinkedIn and you actually kind of reached out and I guess I want to know kind of not, you know, not why'd you do that as an accusatory way, but just kind of what got you to feel like he wanted to engage, you know, as a, as a coworker and friend or like what I guess got your attention. I was just curious about that. Uh, I'd say it was topical for sure. Not, mm -hmm. not. You know, it wasn't like a, a pity listen by any means. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was uh, definitely topic intrigue. So um, in general, I, I also am interested in my future and finances, investments, etc. That's what your whole podcast is about. But then specifically your cousin's episode, uh, mm. Samson, I believe, right? That yes, yes. Talking about uh, starting a business and how to turn it, turn your side gig into a full gig, uh, full-time mm -hmm. gig. And, um, I, I don't have any side gigs, but, uh, I've always thought I would like to own a business and, you know, do that. And, and now having a family and responsibilities, it feels like one of the only ways really to do that would be through a side gig, pro uh, journey. Um, so I was intrigued there. Um, I, and then seeing that some of them were short form, I jumped in and listened to several others. And, uh, and then I think I found a recent one with your brother, Matt, yeah, uh, who also had a, a business tie. And, uh, now I'm trying to remember exactly what you talked about, but anyways, that one was also super intriguing. Um, yeah, we spoke, I spoke with him. I have a couple where when we talked about real estate as an investment, other one was about retirement and passive income. So you might've been maybe the, the passive one right income there. one. Yep. Cause mm -hmm. that's something that's very interesting to me because, uh, it's not necessarily something I'm dying to get in a position where I just quit my job and have some other comp business that it becomes my full-time gig or I like the idea of passive income and still doing what I want to do career wise or, or not, you know what I mean? Right. right. <laughs> so it's all very interesting. Um, but I thought it was really cool. And you even gave me feedback on ways to engage with people. And I thought that was really awesome. And uh, yeah. it seemed like the kind of person who likes to reach out and to uh, engage with people. Um, I'm sure that served you in your career in life quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, I, so my background is in sales. I don't remember how much we said that or not, but um, uh, and, and I think there's, you know, you have to be comfortable doing that for sure. If you're going to work in sales, uh, yeah. so, you know, I genuinely like to see people succeed. And one of your questions on, a, on a different episode was around like where you are posting it and, you know, that kind of stuff. And so I felt like, you know, I, I had a, an opinion that would help you out. And so I was happy, yeah. happy to reach out and share that for sure. So. But something you said earlier in the beginning of the conversation, you've always been interested in finance and investing and kind of getting into that. And I, I thought of this question earlier that I actually wrote down. Yeah. Um, it's something that interests me because my relationship to money as a child, and uh, you may have not heard, not heard me talk about it a little bit in one of my episodes, just like I didn't really know how to save. I, this idea of saving money just was mm -hmm. foreign to me as a child. And I would just, if I've had money, I felt like, I need to spend it or it's just going to disappear anyway. So I might as well do something fun in the meantime. That's kind of the mentality, yeah. whether not necessarily consciously, right? But kind of what would you say your relationship to money and saving was as a child or and throughout your life? Yeah. So my uh, parents were always pretty good about, you know, pulling the curtain back and talking about budgeting and saving and things like that. Um, but there's a, a nature piece of that too, which I was, uh, opposite of you probably in that I, either I would have something I wanted to buy that cost money, or I didn't know what I wanted, but I was always sure there was something going to show up that I would want money for. And so I generally didn't spend a lot of money, um, because I always knew there was going to be something big that I wanted to buy and would want the money for. 
Mm. Contrast that with my brother who grew up with the same parents. Uh, and he, he was much more like you as like a dollar in a dollar out. And that yeah. new bar was well worth it. But then when he wanted something big, it's like, boy, I, how do I save $10? I don't know about that. Uh, and even at times he would buy candy bars in between his process of getting to the $10 thing. And whereas I was like, well, I have the $10 because I hadn't bought candy bars. Um, so that was my kind of overall relationship with money at a young age and now with a family and trying to think mm -hmm. about how do we provide the best possible support. Our, our lifestyle goals and desires and certainly the, the essentials, but then also, you know, is there a way that we can increase our time uh, spent with the family or our mm. time wealth? I don't know. I don't know a different way to say that. Like a time management kind of thing. Is that, well, can we be rich in time? And yeah. you know, right now I have to trade time for dollars so that we can then mm -hmm. pay for things and, is there a way to change that formula a little bit, which is kind of the passive income stuff you talk yeah. about with your brother? And um, anywho, there you go. No, it's an interesting thing you bring up because it's like we can fill this scarcity with time, whether it's real or not. Like you're right, if if every time you make money, it requires you taking time to be at work or to do that side thing or whatever it may be, you know. Then yeah, like we do and get less and less time to do the things we really want to do, like spend time with family. Um, or just relax sometimes too is great, even us on our own or with our spouse or significant mm -hmm. other or whatever. Right. Um, but I have found that something I've been thinking about lately is sometimes we have this scarcity mindset around time where we feel like there is no time to do the things that we want to do or those extra things, right? And yeah. so we may not p go to the gym because it's like, oh, it's just more time or we may not try mm -hmm. to do that side thing or we might not even like help somebody, you know, or or spend time with friends because you think, oh, it just seems like such a hassle. I don't, I don't know how that necessarily relates to the conversation, but I just think that there is a real problem where we can not have the time we need if we're too busy hustling. Right. But we can also convince ourselves that we don't have time. But really, if we, we could find time for things that really matter the most, mm -hmm. right? You know, one of my greatest challenges is uh, you you. If you, if I were to ask you and you, you can insert any sort of hobby or vice or uh, distraction or whatever, right? Whether it's mm -hmm. watching something on Netflix or YouTube or, uh, you know, insert whatever. Um, if you were to ask me at the beginning of the week, hey, you're going to have 10 hours of time spent. Uh, would you, do you want to put that into said distraction or uh, unwinding activity? Or would you rather put that into learning or a preferred hobby or starting a business or whatever? Well, I think 100% of the time I'm going to choose the business or the hobby or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. I would, if I were to say, hey, you can watch 10 hours of Netflix and movie, or you can go play 10 hours of tennis or basketball. I'm playing tennis and basketball for 10 hours every single time. But at the end of the week, we look back, what did I actually do? I watched yeah. 10 hours of Netflix. What, why did I do that? And I think yeah. because there's a time commitment, you can watch half hour of Netflix, but you can't go play basketball for a half hour. It's a two hour commitment or, you know, whatever. And so uh, that's one of my biggest challenges uh, in, around time. Hmm. The, and, that's a good point, actually. Up, right? So what's the answer there? Because I agree with you because on paper, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, yeah, well, of course, we always want to do the most uh, rewarding thing with our time. But then we find ourselves yeah. watching Netflix for 10 hours a week or whatever, right? <laughs> you know, and and you don't necessarily feel good. It seems like that when I find myself wasting time, you don't feel satisfied. You don't feel enriched. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But then you do certain things. You're like, oh, I did something productive. I did something meaningful, whether it be spending time with family or doing some other like, right. you know, working out or doing something active. You just feel right. better. Right. So yeah. what do you do with that? <laughs> oh, it's tough. I, uh, I feel like part of it is the root cause, right? Like maybe I actually am tired. Mm. Right. And I do need a break. And, mm. and this other stuff requires effort. Whereas 
you know, Netflix uh, is a, a mind numbing task. Mm-hmm. And so you can check out, you can, you, and you think because of that, you're going to be rejuvenated. But that's what you're getting at is I actually wasn't rejuvenated by it. So I think first it's acknowledging why am I going to that activity? Well, I'm mentally tired. Um, and then I think you have to have a replacement activity for it that mm. will rejuvenate, but also doesn't task the mind in the same way that has caused you to feel the fatigue. So, you know, one of the ways I've been able to break away from some of these in the past is replacing it with a fictional book. I couldn't do nonfiction because it was still mentally tasking, but if I did a fictional book, I enjoyed that and I felt better about having read something versus watching something. And then, you know, I'm choosing what I'm reading versus rabbit hole on YouTube. And now I'm watching, you know, I I don't know, bunnies hop around or something. I don't know, whatever, right? Like you get in these rabbit holes. How did I land from here to bunnies? I don't even know. But yeah, actual actual rabbit holes. You're watching bunnies coming out of rabbit holes. Yeah, right. Um, So I think there has to be a replacement activity. Mm. Um, but then I also think there's a level of, you know, acknowledgement and then making a conscious choice ahead of time to say, Hey, when I am faced with this choice next time, I'm going to choose this instead of that. Um, Mm. but if you don't plan ahead, then, then you, you don't make that decision. That's such a good point because I think that um, we only have so much discipline in each day. And I, I don't know where I've heard this, but I just know that people tend to make the worst decisions that they regret, like at the end of the day when they've used up all of their self discipline, you know. And so the more times we can plan ahead to do something and how we address a situation, we don't mm-hmm. have to use that mental energy to like make those choices if we've already made it ahead of time. And it right. can be hard at first because you have to break your kind of deep rooted habits. Like something I brought up earlier that is going to the gym. It's something I've been doing for actually several months now, but hadn't done for years and years. You know, I used to go when I, thanks, I'd be catch a tail. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I, I, um, I used to go with my roommates when I was single, like all every day. And then I got married and it's just like throws off the uh, patterns. And then I have a a neighbor that suddenly was like, hey, we should start going to the gym, you know, and we ended up going to the gym. Like I said, I've been doing it for a while. Uh, but at first it was the whole idea of like going to the gym seemed like so much to do. And like, mm-hmm. you know, this idea of like, even the same thing with finances and saving and being disciplined, you're like, okay, I come up with a budget and I have these plans. And then like, I guess I just do that forever. I just have right. to be disciplined forever. Right. And that sounds so right. overwhelming. Like, right. okay, so I go to the gym and I get in a certain level of shape, but then I have to go forever to maintain that. And so that would be enough to keep, make me not want to do it for so long. Right. 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 But you learn, though, I decide, you know, I'm just going to do it. And then once you get to a a certain point, it becomes not a question. The alarm goes off in the morning. It's not a question of like, should I or should I not get up? That's Mm -hmm. already been decided. It's now become ingrained in me. It took a little bit of time. And it's just like getting up and going and knowing even when I feel a little tired, it's that inner that only discipline I need is that two seconds to just get up out of bed. And then it's like, okay, I may be tired, but you also learn the value of doing Mm -hmm. these things. You kind of learn, you know, you have enough evidence that, oh, if I don't do it, I actually feel more tired during the day in the morning. It's harder to get going at work. I feel right. better when I go and I'm happier and I enjoy it. You start to look forward to these things. Right. I mean, can you, does that make any sense what I'm saying? Yeah, it does. And it, it feels a little bit like you're, you're learning how to hack the mind, if you will. Right. And yeah. So you're starting to, you know, you said you only have so much discipline in a day. I kind of like that. And I, I don't know if I've heard that before, but, um. So you're pre-making decisions so that tomorrow I can use the discipline on other things. Um, and, and so I like that a lot. But then to your point, then you start, okay, I'm doing it. I decided that. So that's off the table. And then you start finding the rewards of doing them. But I also think like I had a period of time. I also, I hate working out. Um, anybody who knows me, that's not a secret. Uh, now I'll run up and down a, a basketball court for four hours, but go to the gym for a half hour and, and pound weights. Hate it. Hate that. <laughs> I, I hate it. Anyways, there was about eight months of time where I did go to the gym every morning, 6 a.m. before work uh, with a buddy. But it started with, hey, I'm just showing up and shooting hoops. That's all I'm doing. I'm in. I'm here. 
and mm-hmm. I'm awake and I, I'm, but that's all I'm doing. And then after, I don't know, a week or two of that, then it's like, okay, let's shoot hoops. And then I'll go do five minutes of working out or 10 minutes of working out. And then eventually it got to a point where it was like, okay, uh, every other day is basketball day. And in between is a workout day. Um, and then I think by the end it was like, Hey, I'm, I'm okay. If we just play basketball once a week or something. Um, but I had to find a way to, that I would enjoy as a segue into the actual mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and kind of make, I guess maybe baby steps in a way. And mm-hmm. I related to finance, there's, there's pieces of it there too, right? You, can you make baby steps to the actual path of what you want and then set up ways to reward yourself when you hit milestones? And so it's not forever, um, but it is. Or we figure out how to make lots of money and then we don't. Then, then Yeah, don't that's know. true. But it's like these things, but it's funny because as we learn that these things work, it doesn't become something we dread. We actually enjoy the process like, oh, this is paying off. Right. Like I may, I have money. I have, uh, I have security or I have health. I feel you know, good. Or yeah. So, or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Cause if you think about it, like there's certain things that just become innate and natural that you don't have to think about anymore. Like you're not going to go just blow money on a bunch of candy bars. Cause that's just not you. Maybe that used to be you, you know, but it's not a problem anymore. You're not going to just not take care of your body. You're not, you know, it's like when you drive a car, if everything you, if you had to constantly be focusing on everything all the time, then you'd be so exhausted. Our brains learn these patterns of like, mm-hmm. I just put my hands on the wheel and I push the gas. You don't have to consciously think about doing any of this stuff. Right. You know what I mean? And it right. could, it can be the same way. The more we do things, the less our brain has to kick in. It becomes yeah. just part of us. I just love that you had mentioned earlier about just like how you naturally have always kind of been a saver and a person mm-hmm. who looks towards big goals. Um, and that's something I'm working on is, is, is doing that, you know? Yeah. Um, cause like I'm similar, my, like my brother's the saver is your brother that is different, more like me. Is he younger or older than you? He's younger than me. Oh, okay. Cause my little brother's the one that's like, dang, I looked at him. I was like, how did you save up a hundred and whatever dollars for this workout machine? You just, I mean, and I'm like, sure, yeah. I'm like six years older than you. And I'm like, huh, you know, so right, right. that's really cool. Well, thanks so much, man. I appreciate yeah. you coming on and talking about this. Yeah, you bet. Uh, I don't know if there's more topics you wanted to chat through, but I'm happy to. Um, but yeah, I ha- happy to have come on. And If anybody has uh, questions for Joseph or for me, if they have any ideas of topics or just want to add to the conversation in any way, you can email me at nobettertime.podcast at gmail.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, right now with a video of it subscribe and if you're not on youtube go to youtube search no better time podcast and subscribe so i can start making some money get some uh let's get oh. some people on there <laughs> all right thanks again joseph yeah, you're the man. i don't know if i'd call this one passive income because you got to put in the work to to get the videos but i guess at some point i think no thing about any type of income starts with a certain effort up front you right, know what i mean right. so i kind of see that like if i can actually get to the point i have people listening to these podcasts or watching youtube videos yeah. Um, it becomes passive income because right. it that's the this content is evergreen as they call it. <laughs> it mm. never it never goes stale, right? This is content that will right. always be of interest, potentially, hopefully. And right. then people will watch it years to come. That's the plan. <laughs> yeah. Eventually maybe somebody will listen and be like, What's Netflix? Yeah. <laughs> They'll look it up like, Oh, look, I love this history podcast. <laughs> right. It's awesome. Well, it was nice to chat. Yeah, man, you too. See All right, bye.